Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. Back in July of 2020, I did a video on the UDM Pro failover and load balancing. At the time in the firmware, we were able to do load balancing, but we cannot do that anymore. It only supports the failover. I still get a lot of emails asking how to set up the WAN failover, and it's really easy. You plug in your secondary ISP into the UDM Pro and away you go. If you have static information, you do need to put that in or PPPoE and we'll go over that in this video. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. If you'd like to support the channel, we do have memberships available now and you can join below this video. If you're building out a new office or home, this is how we should have our two ISP connections. We would have our one ISP connection coming into the building from the left-hand side and then the second ISP connection coming in from the right hand side. If say they were doing construction outside on the left side of the building and both your ISP connections came into that and they dug up both cables, your internet would go down and the failover wouldn't even matter. So this is why we want to have different cable paths coming in. A lot of the times it's not possible to do that, but it's best practice to if you can. So for our ISP connection one, it's just going to be DHCP into port nine of my UDM Pro. For my ISP connection 2, we're going to set static IPs. So the IP information will be 192.168.240.100 with a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0 and our gateway of 192.168.240.1. You need to make sure that you use correct SFPs and the one that I'm currently using is this 10G Tech. This is a 1000 base T copper SFP and you also need to make sure of the distances. This one will go 100 meters, but there are other copper SFPs that only go 30 meters. You could also use fiber SFPs, and this is one that would work with Ubiquiti, and I'll put both of these links down below. So now let's go ahead and get WAN 2 configured. If we look at my UDM Pro, we could see that there's only the WAN 1 that's available right now, and it's on 192.168.230.165. I have the copper SFP here, and I'm going to insert that into port 10. And now we can see WAN2 has come up and it's just taking a DHCP address. This is just a private IP address range. It's getting 192.168.240.166. But we want to statically assign an IP address to my WAN2 connection. So to do that, we need to go to our settings. And then from our settings, we need to go to internet. On the internet, we can see that we have WAN2. I'll click it. We could give it a name if we'd like, but I'm not going to do that. And I'll press the down arrow on advanced. We could scroll down and here is where we're going to put in our static IP information. We have IPv4 connection and IPv6. Currently the IPv4 address is just for DHCP, but we want to have this statically assigned. So we'll press static IP. If you have PPPoE, we would select that there. And I already entered all this information in before. So we have 192.168.240.100 as our static IP address. And then we have a slash 24 and then we have our router IP. If you have more than one static IP address, you could add it down here. We have additional IP addresses. So say we have 100, 101, and 102, we could add those additional IP addresses. Then all we need to do is press apply changes. Once the UDM Pro is done provisioning, we should see that we have that new static IP on the WAN connection and it looks like it's done. So let's look under our WAN too. And now we can see that we're getting 192.168.240.100. So that's it. Our WAN2 connection is now set up and it's in failover mode. So if we go back to the settings of WAN2, you could see that it says load balancing, but the only thing we can do is failover. There's no other option. So hopefully they add that in the future to another firmware update. If your ISP requires a VLAN ID, that's where we would specify it here, as well as MAC address clone. So now what we need to do, we need to test to make sure that this failover connection is working. But first I wanna see which internet I am running through and it should be 230.1. So I'm gonna do a trace to google.ca. And you can see that we hit 230.1, which is our primary WAN address. On this right-hand side command prompt, I'm going to do a consistent ping to google.ca. And then I'm going to unplug WAN1, and we may see a packet or two drop, so I'll go unplug that now. Okay, so we saw one request timeout, but then it picked the internet back up. So let's do another trace to google.ca, and it should be going out 240.1. All right, and we see that it went out 240.1. If we plug in the main WAN connection one, it will fail back over to the primary connection. And we could see that with another trace. 
So I'll plug in our WAN 1 connection. And we could see a packet drop when it switches over. All right, so we saw that request timeout. Let's do another trace to google.ca. All right, and we see that we're hitting 230.1, which is what we want. We always want to go through our primary WAN connection if we can. And that's really it for the WAN failover. There's nothing else we need to configure. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.